life is good. Okay, quick question. What do people see when they look at you? For those of you who don't know me, my name is Aaron. This is the Bible Applied where we choose a bit of the Bible and just go through it. And today we're going through Titus chapter two, verses three to five. I'm going to show you in this video how to show people that the Bible makes a difference in your life. Okay, let's, uh, let's jump into this then. So uh, Titus chapter two, verses three to five says, likewise, teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live, not to be slanderers or addicted to much wine, but to teach what is good. Then they can urge the younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, I've heard that before, and pure, to be busy at home, to be kind and to be subject to their husbands so that no one will malign the word of God. Don't malign the word of God, peeps. So what have we looked at so far? Paul is asking Timothy to teach the people what right behavior looks like, so that the teaching of God would be attractive. And, and that makes sense, right? Um, because if they were living normally, and just like everyone else, and they were saying that they were Christians, actually Christianity didn't make a difference. So how do they live like it matters? Right, let's go through this then. So it says, likewise, teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live. Reverent? Reverent just means uh, set apart for a special purpose. It just means they're living a holy life. Not to be slanderers. Do you know what, do you know I looked up that word slander? It's also translated devil. Okay, it's accuse or gossip or, yeah, so make an accusation to someone. Uh, slanderers or addicted to much wine. I love that, much wine. Much wine! But to teach what is good. I think we could probably imagine what was going on in their culture. So addiction to wine, slandering, gossip, not being self-controlled. <laughs> I think we can guess what the things these older women were actually involved in. Right, quick pause. Uh, we can make a slight application here. How are you with alcohol at the moment? How are you with alcohol? Now, I don't think the Bible says don't drink alcohol, but we shouldn't ever change from wanting it to needing it. Like, having alcohol is okay, but needing alcohol, you've gone too far. Don't be addicted to much wine. So what was the job of these reverent women? Uh, they were to teach the younger women what it meant to live. See that at the end of verse three, they were to teach what is good then they can urge the younger women to love their husbands and children. Now, I imagine that probably wasn't happening in Crete, a uh, little party island there. So love their families, to be self-controlled, presumably that means with alcohol as well, uh, to be self-controlled and pure, to be busy at home, to be kind, and, and to be subject to their husbands. What? Now, we've, we've got to be really careful about our application here. Okay, we've got to be really careful of it because it isn't that every single woman should be working at home and that they should be subject to everything that their husbands say to them. That's not what he's saying here. And that's not the application for us. The principle that he's talking about here is don't ignore your culture. Don't ignore your culture. But here's an interesting test. Uh, would you obey scripture if it did say that? If you are offended by that, if that's what scripture did say, would you still follow it? I think sometimes we can only follow scripture, or we tend to follow scripture when we agree with it. But actually sometimes we might disagree. Do we still follow? Now think about it like this. It would be culturally very wrong for you to walk into a shopping center and be completely naked. I wouldn't suggest doing this, particularly when it's busy. Walking into a shopping centre completely naked is something that is not done in our culture, is it? So what Paul is saying here is don't be culturally inappropriate. If we were to walk into a shopping centre completely naked, what would the focus be on? It would be on us. Okay, Paul is saying take the focus off you, don't be countercultural. don't be um, against the culture, but be in the culture. Live good lives in the culture. But if you align yourself with the culture and you are in that culture and you're pure and good and kind and right and self-controlled and you show yourself to be the best person you can be within that culture, obviously not doing wrong things, but 
If you could be the best person you could be in that culture, then the focus comes off you and onto what is causing you to do that. So actually the focus then moves straight onto the Bible. So if you live in your culture in the best way that you can, people take the focus off you and onto what is causing you to live rightly. Now for us, that's the Bible. And what is the outcome? Did you notice in verse five, the outcome is that so, no, so that no one will malign the word of God. Malign just needs speak badly of, so that no one will speak badly about the word of God. Another application incoming. Another application incoming. Oh, application. Did you notice what was most important for Paul and for Titus and for the people in Crete? It was that no one would malign the word of God. It wasn't that they would be comfortable or have loads of money or that they would have good health or that they'd have a 24 seven party or whatever. It was that so that no one would malign the word of God. It was their faith. That was the most important thing. So let me ask you this. How are you doing at showing your faith in your culture? Is the attention on you or is it on what is causing you to live in a way that is right and that is good? How are you doing with this? Now, every time I think about this, I tend to think negatively. So actually, if you could, you could put this and think positively, every time that you make a decision for God in your culture, it points people towards him. Now that is a great thing to start off with today, right? If you can choose things today that point people towards the Bible, you're gonna be presenting God and you are gonna be making the Bible look amazing just by your actions. So maybe go forth and do that today. Go forth! Go forth! And do! Steve's challenge. Okay, time for another Steve's challenge. Okay, work out this riddle in the quickest time. Your time starts once the riddle has been read out. Okay, before I read this, um, what you'll need to do is uh, pause the video. Uh, you will need to get a timer, and then when I read this out, see if you can get it quicker than I can. Okay? Okay. You ready? You pause the video. Well, I, oh, you, anyway. Okay, here we go. Who makes it has no need of it. Who buys it has no use for it. Who uses it can neither see it nor feel it. What is it? I was gonna say air, but air, you don't buy air, do you? And everyone has a use for it. Time? Steve, what is this? This is incredible. Who makes it has no need of it. Who buys it has no use for it. Who uses it can neither see nor feel it. What is it? Well, money. You buy money. Who uses it can neither see nor feel it. Is it cryptocurrency? That's what I'm gonna go for. I'm gonna go for cryptocurrency. That's gonna be my answer. If you can get it better than that in that time, then that's it. Is it cryptocurrency? It's not cryptocurrency. What is it then? I, I'm, okay, right, this is me stopping. Okay, I'm now giving up. Uh, what is it? It's a coffin. What? A co who makes it has no need of it. Why does it make sense? They will do one day, won't they? They have, who makes it has, oh, I guess if you make a coffin, then you've got no need of it. Who buys it has no use for it. I'm done. Right, uh, if you wanna see if you can upload a riddle or see if you, how quickly you can get the answer, um, then let me know your time in the Facebook group. I will hope to see you there.